you might be deciding to go outside. And eventually, oh by the way, this is my skin, because obviously I don't want to show my license plates and all that crap. So, you go outside, and it's an absolutely normal day. It's bright, and there's a big cul-de-sac. There's a start of a woods, woody area inside. You look, and you find a bunch of weird looking things that look somewhat of grapes. These are definitely not grapes. I'm going to, uh, how, do, how do I do this? So you go outside and then you see it, then you pick it, then there's only one thing you can do if you want to survive in this harsh wilderness, eating it. But you don't know what the effects can be, you don't know what can happen to you when you do this. You take that weird plant that you found and take it outside in the sun for a more noticeable look. You see it and you look at it. It looks like a cluster of grapes, but no, it is not a cluster of grapes. This is a pokeberry plant. And pokeberries, even though they are used for some pretty cool things, here is two sides of the plant itself. A short documentary by Alex. <coughs> I got a really bad cold. So, um... You go and check on the plant, and then you note that it's a pokeberry plant. Now, you look at the harsh-looking pokeberry plant, and you say to yourself, I'm going to eat this. No, don't eat it. It's poisonous. And it's poisonous for every single part of the plant. Berry, bud, flower, stem and roots. Every part of this plant is poisonous. You can't, even though you can't eat it, you can also do some very cool stuff with it. Oh, by the way, yeah, the juice is also poisonous. If you ingest all of those things. If you eat a lot of it, yeah, it can kill you. But if you eat like one, it'll cause you to puke really bad. So you look at the plant and think, what else can I do with this thing? Well, there's one more thing that you could do. Squish it and see what the juice looks like. Well, that is a quite of, a, of an amazing idea. That is an outstanding idea. Let's try that and see if it works out for us. You head to the cul-de-sac blocking the camera, since you still don't want to see the license plates. And then, you head to the woods, in which there is an old path to the back of the elementary school. Hmm. You say, carefully as you watch the kids playing in the cul-de-sac a little bit ago. Then you go toward that place that you saw before and wonder, why am I doing this? Well, the fact that you are doing this is because Alex here, which is me, I'm telling you about this pretty cool stuff, about a documentary about these poisonous plants. So you go up 
and you closely see and look up and you're able to carefully see the playground in the background right over there and you keep walking and keep walking you try to find a place where your dog won't lick it because obviously it's poisonous you try to go far 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 Oh, oh, by the way, please make sure to wash your hands after handling with this plant because you don't want to get poison on your hands and then have to eat a burger at a restaurant and get poison inside of your mouth and end up puking the burger all out in your bathroom. You go on a trail, a small trail in the middle of who knows where. Who knows who carved it out? Who knows who even made it? You keep walking and walking and walking until you finally try to find a good place to rest the plant. There we go. Hey. Huh. The purple juice splatters out. Take it, put it back on, and obviously squish it again a second time. Now, the other part that I was going to say about this plant is the fact that even though it is very squishable and squashable, and it is getting a stain, going to have a stain all over my shoe, it still is used for some pretty cool stuff. For instance, the juice right here that I am squeezing and squishing, trying to get all the berries out like that, it's a deep purple, the deep purple juice. Obviously I'm getting it on this leaf right here and I'm getting it all over these other leaves. I'm going over here so I can actually wipe it off. It's off. So what you can do with the plant, with the, I mean with the juice, is some pretty amazing stuff. Now I have a tissue in my pocket that I can use to pitter patter on the juice. Pit, plat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat, pit, pat. There you go. Now here's the juice on here. It is a deep magenta, or a deep purple color. I'm trying to scratch all the whatchamacallits off or whatever. It's okay to get it on your skin. I actually suggest even putting it on your skin because it um, actually was used a long, long time ago as paint and even you can actually wear it on your face and you're gonna be perfectly fine which is quite weird even though it's poisonous so if you ingest it it's gonna be poisonous but yeah you can actually take it squish the berries and paint on your face there's a spider web right in front of me so you can take it and paint it on your face which is actually a pretty cool thing I mean painting this stuff on your face is actually a pretty cool idea because that's the way that um, people long, long ago, like, I don't know, like the Stone Age or something like that, had to use it. One man probably ate it. A few other men or women probably ate it too. And they obviously died because they ate too much and they thought it was grapes. The end. Never mind. And then one day, some random painter named who knows what his name was took the plant, squeezed it in his hands, and started painting it on his face. And he felt perfectly fine. He showed it to his friends, and then they were like, oh my god, man, how do you do that? And then he was like, well, I take this plant, and then I put it all over my face. And that's basically it. And then he shows them how to do it, and 3,000 something years later, to the present day right now, uh,
That's how face paint works.